Hello, my name is Lorraine Murray and I'm the author of two books, one of which is this one called Calm Kids, which shows you how to teach your children meditation. I've been doing this for quite a long time, for over 10 years, and I'm really passionate about people learning how to teach their kids meditation, particularly if their children have additional support needs like ADHD or autism. I believe that children of any age can learn some form of mindful activity and so therefore this book Can Kids Exists. The idea of this short video blog is to give you a little bit of an insight into creating a relaxing environment. I'm going to give you just a couple of hints and tips that come from this book which you can purchase on Amazon as a Kindle or as a regular paperback. The book is very practical because it's the kind of person that I am. I like to make sure that when people are using some of the techniques that they find them easy to use regardless of the experience that you may or may not have. So I hope that some of these tips will help to bring some light to how you might start trying to teach your children meditation or how you might enhance what you're already doing. The whole idea of creating a relaxing environment is so that it signals to your children that this is the place where you go to meditate. Sometimes when people come on our courses, because we run courses based on the book as well, we find it difficult to think about how we can set up a meditation space. And some of the ideas that I'm going to touch on here are about creating an ideal space. But if you feel completely overwhelmed or you just don't have the space to create a perfect space, then please don't let that stop you from even trying to teach your children meditation. These are just hints and tips for you to kind of dip in and out of if you can accommodate them. And something else that we've found when I've been teaching the, the Connected Kids courses, which this book is based on, is that it's actually quite useful to, especially if you're a beginner, to start teaching your children when they're in bed and lying down. And I know, strictly speaking, that's not meditation, but it is showing your children how to relax. And that's the first step when anyone learns meditation, is how to relax their body. So if you do that when they're in bed, it becomes a little bit like, instead of reading them a bedtime story that is written down by someone else, you start to create your own journey together. And I've heard lots of my students on the courses tell me afterwards how their kids have, just within a couple of minutes, just switched off and gone to sleep. And most parents really want their kids to have a good night's sleep because it means more rest for the parents as well. So that's one way of doing it. But if you are looking to create a relaxing environment, I'm going to touch on some things in the book that might be useful. It's really important not to be disturbed when you're trying to teach your children meditation. And we are so obsessed with our phones these days, but please switch it off. And not even on silent, because sometimes the music system that you use can pick up a text message on the speakers. So switch it off. And if you're in a house with other people, make sure that they know not to just barge into the room where you're trying to teach children meditation. In fact, one of the nice things you can do is actually hang a sign on the door that says, shh, we're meditating. And what can also become a mindful activity is creating that sign with your child or your children. Using the sense of sight is important for us when we're learning to meditate. We take in such a lot of information visually around us. And so using soft lighting can really enhance the whole sense of relaxation. So have some soft lighting. The schools I worked in had things like lava lamps or projectors with lights on the ceiling, which were really good for helping to hold a children's focus whilst they were trying to relax and let go. Sometimes though, if it's possible and it's a really sunny day, having warm sunshine come into a room can also be beneficial. It means that you can incorporate this into the children breathing in this warm feeling of the sunshine. It also means that you can do meditations outside too for that very same reason. Using sound. Well, I find that a lot of adults get very upset when there's sound around them when they're trying to meditate, but I find that children are really quite able to block out sound most of the time. I've worked in schools, <laughs> they're really noisy places, so don't be too concerned if 
you don't have a perfectly quiet space. Sound can also become part of the meditation. So it can be about us talking to our children and guiding them to notice sound, but much more mindfully than they did before. Instead of it just being like white noise all around our head, we start to pay attention to sound. It could be the sound of their own breath and allowing them to make louder sounds with their breath. It could be about the sounds around them, your breath, perhaps the sounds outside like traffic or birds or the sea or the sound of the wind going through the leaves or whatever other sounds happen to be around. So sound can become part of the meditation itself and even focusing on that sense for a couple of breaths or up to 30 seconds can start to help children to relax and let go. Using the sense of smell can be very powerful in helping our children to relax. We are really hardwired to pick up information through our sense of smell. So if you're using perhaps a relaxing scent, some of you will be trained in aromatherapy, so by all means use your experience to bring in some nice comforting smells. Using the sense of touch. Again, like sound, bringing their awareness to the sense of touch and really encouraging them to notice where their bodies are, where their bodies begin and end. Going through the body as a form of relaxation can be a very powerful way for children to get into their body and learn to help it relax. Sometimes children do hold a lot of tension in their body, especially around this area here and the, the stomach and we can have tummy problems. And basically they're processing their stress. So if that's the case, maybe bring their attention there through the sense of touch where they lay their hand on that part of the body and just noticing it. And if their tummy gurgles, encourage them to giggle or laugh if that's what they feel. Because tummy gurgling is a really good sign that stress is being released. Clutter. Well, I try to be tidy. I'm sure you do too. But children can be really affected if a place is full of clutter. So try and minimise the distractions around them by hiding or tidying away the clutter so that they can focus on what you're asking them to do. And the use of colours. Colours is like a, a secondary language when it comes to teaching children meditation. We can bring colour into a meditation through their imagination, asking them to notice things in their mind, which may be a particular colour, or we may give them a colour, or perhaps we bring it into the environment through coloured cushions or scarves, or even helping them to draw with colour. So those are just a few ideas from this book, which I hope you found helpful. And if you want to know more, then pick up a copy on Amazon. I'm also coming to the US, uh, the US of A, to teach uh, in April, which is next week. And so for a limited time up until Saturday, uh, the 11th of April, you can book a, a place on the course. This is where I teach everything in this book and bring it to life. And people can ask me lots of questions. If you want to take part in the course, then please come along and look on our website. You'll see the link as I'm speaking here now. Some people can't make the course. I totally understand that. So there's also an online version. And just so you know, there's two different levels of the course. There's a level one, which is all about bringing this book to life, which is for anyone who works with or has their own children. And then we do a level two where we go into a lot more detail about the additional support needs that children may have, especially if they're on the autistic spectrum. So if you're interested in knowing more, please have a look at the website. I really hope you can join me. I really hope you get started teaching your children meditation. Thank you for listening.